All right. Hi, Michael. You made it up here. I did. My apologies. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> we were trying to get you in here. Um, but yeah, I definitely want uh, to start this podcast off right. This is we were having some technical difficulties. So, Michael, this is my um, Clubhouse study group that I do every Monday. I've been doing it for about three years. So, guys, Michael is new to Clubhouse. He is a former client of mine um, from TikTok. He just passed his master level exam. But you guys know I always love pouring into you guys stories of encouragement uh, just to keep you motivated. So I wanted to start off this podcast with interviewing him, but in a way that, of course, gives you guys kind of a walkthrough of what he experienced with his exam because his, his story was pretty powerful. So I'm going to share a little bit with that with you guys and then we're going to hop into the part they love is their questions um so they get study questions from the session but i also do podcast interviews here just to give them some inspiration michael so we're going to go ahead and get started it was a little bit of a rough start but you're here and sorry that you weren't feeling very well thank you again for doing this michael um i really really appreciate you for coming on Absolutely. Uh, and supporting it so just give me one second uh, before I go ahead and start the record. Okay, give me a second. Just want to make sure it captures. Thank you guys in the audience for your patience. And we'll start. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead. I was able to pull. I um, always have notes in front of me. So, um, Michael, I'm going to introduce you. So this is Michael. Michael is now a master level licensed social worker, but he wasn't always one. And I want to share his story with you guys of just resilience. Um, when I first met Michael, it was through TikTok. He had made a calendar appointment with me and he talked about some of the struggles that he had with his licensure now when i met michael i believe you were on your fourth try your fourth attempt you had just missed it by three points on your fourth try about a week um, before your consultation with me it had only been a week at the time i believe correct correct mm -hmm. yes <laughs> so and you were telling me some of the struggles that you had now i'm not going to mention the programs here because they're pretty popular, of course, um, and I want to keep it relevant to your journey. But you, one of the things that you talked about uh, some of your struggles was one, having ADHD, like me, um, having a neural development disorder, being overwhelmed with content, and just really frustrated with not knowing where to start, what you were doing wrong. You have been in my TikTok lives for quite a little bit, like a lot of folks, and you saw that there are results that were happening. You wanted to know what was it that I was doing that was helping people to pass. And you had severe testing anxiety, of course. So some of Michael's pain points was, of course, the recurring exam failures, um, taking four times, missing short by three points, testing anxiety and ADHD significantly hindered his exam performance despite having accommodations for ADHD. His anxiety remained a critical barrier and effective self-study material. So he's used a range, not going to name them here, um, but he used a lot of popular self-study programs that were out there. He wasn't able to achieve his goal. He had technical issues during his exams. He said he experienced some technical glitches between attempts and the actual testing, which added stress and frustration. So after hearing that and recognizing what Michael's challenges were, we designed, based off of them being so close, a seven-week one-on-one -on -one coaching program that was tailored to his needs, but leveraging his past attempts. So we did a detailed review and structure plan, looking at your past scores, identifying weak areas, come up with a structured study plan to target those areas. A lot of mindset coaching. Uh, for those of you, most of you know that I was a former therapist of 18 years. And one of the most effective techniques you can use, um, not just with phobias, but with testing anxiety is CBT. So we did a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, cognitive restructuring, thought replacement to manage his anxiety, and confidence building, of course, also helped Michael. 
Um, his results, I'm going to tell you, by his fourth week, Michael showed a significant improvement in his confidence level and the ability for him to process content. So when he had his first practice exam with me, he hit, I believe it was 127 out of 170. That was a 75% accuracy. That was by your fourth week, Michael, mm -hmm. your fourth week. And we did a lot of fine tuning of your study plan based off of that report and tweaked where you needed to improve even after that. The outcome, of course, was you passing on March 26th. You left me a text message saying, I guess it's my time. This was your fifth time testing and you didn't just score. You didn't just pass the exam. You blew it out of the water. You had a 113, 13 points past the passing score, which is a significant milestone for you. Um, so I wanted to just talk about just what your process was um, in terms of what you experienced just going through that journey. I know I kind of gave pinpoints of what we did together, but I want people to understand what that was like for you, especially the anxiety part, because when I said, <laughs> I told you I was gonna throw you underneath the bus, Michael, with this, but <laughs> this dude would call me, let me tell y'all, text me, it'd be midnight. I'm like, what is happening? And he would say, "You, I'd be ha I'm having anxiety and I would have to talk him down. And that's what that holistic coaching part really is about, that on call, having the support, and really giving you that support, you needed it and you needed it around the clock. But it was so interesting. By the time we hit the fourth week, after your fourth week only, it diminished. And that was constantly because we did a lot of work around your mindset and your anxiety and fighting yourself past those experiences. But boy, those text messages, um, <laughs> the text messages and, you know, calling you and talking you off a cliff. Um, I was happy to do it, but boy, I was like, oh boy, your anxiety was really, really a barrier. And I think for you more so what Michael was just your mindset. Talk about that because that's what keeps people in there where they are. And I want my colleagues to understand that journey for you. And I'll shut my face. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Shara. I, uh, you know, this journey was, was absolutely a, a lot to endure. Um, talk about the anxiety, you know, and I'll even touch base from from the beginning. Yeah, so I reached out for a consultation with you. I did have those two glitches um, during the previous time, um, and that was about a 14-minute window before they could get the computer back up and running um, around question 67 and then around question 111. Um, I think by that fourth week, it wasn't necessarily an ADHD thing. That's when I truly realized it was more of an anxiety thing, which I never really felt like I did struggle with anxiety, especially during these test taking, you know, um, kind of kind of things. Because you know, in undergrad it was medicine, and I was doing physical chemistry, all the all the sciences, and I never really struggled with it. Um, but then I recognized that this test is isn't necessarily black and white, right? Um, I think the journey that and I guess it also didn't help that I'm in Arizona, right? And you're on the East Coast. So yeah, my boundary violation was a little, was a little there. Um, I think, you know, I was, I would continuously, the reinforcement from the audios and then uh, trying to read line by line and then um, trying to keep up with the readings. And then, uh, you know, I think a lot of this um, by that fourth week was taking a step back, understanding that, okay, let me look at what we did the week before, you and I one-on-one, -on -one, right? How can I translate that into my study habits rather than trying to um, cognit cognitively overload myself, right, with this work? Um, because with ADHD, um, you know, that's not, that's not gonna be a, a success. So I really had to understand myself as the studier and as a test taker, um, as well as you know the person being coached through this process, um, and so right, that, those were some of the barriers too. And then you know we all have personal lives and having to. It was a seven week, right? And I, I believe that when we first met, um, typically it was a more of a twelve week thing. But then we said, mm -hmm. okay, we have seven weeks. That's where, um, you know, I, I remember sitting my my family down and I said, you know, I'm going to miss out on a few things. Um, but understand that the outcome is going to be greater than 
right? The immediate gratification of hanging out and, you know, doing what we always do. Um, I want to say it was our second to last session, Shara, where that's where you really heard me um, during our sessions. Like, who is this guy, right? Who is, who is this? Who's this guy I'm coaching? Where did, where did Mike go, right? Um, and something that stuck with me during the process was the outcome, and this is what you said, right? The outcome is going to be the outcome, right? And I have that written down. You saw how many notes I was taking while we were coaching and stuff, right? The outcome is going to be the outcome. Understanding that we're not striving for perfection, we're striving for passing, right? And one consistent factor was that even before our coaching session started, I would always get these great scores on the practice test. One big primary uh, factor that I think led to this accomplishment was that you said the practice exam was made out to be, you know, a little bit harder than, um, you know, what I was going to get myself into. That was the mindset shift there where, okay, understanding um, that this is a test, right? It shouldn't feel like pressure. Yeah, it feels like pressure because financial stability and, you know, you get raises and, uh, you know, all that. You, you, so many doors, right, open. Um, but I think now understanding what was in front of me rather than behind and, you know, uh, I think at that time it was, what, like two or three weeks out from the test, that's where I really came into my own understanding myself as the studier during your your program and the study plan that you designed for me. So, um, you know, there's a difference between obviously pushing through and resilience. And man, there was a lot of the pushing through, especially the last two to three weeks. Um, but it was almost like our sessions together grounded myself, right, where, OK, take a few hours on your Saturday, light read on Sunday, get back into that mindset, right? Um, and, you know, went into the test and, and, and here we are, right? So, uh, yeah. Michael, um, you talked a lot about that internal, um, that just that internal process. And that's what I want people to understand because there's a difference. And some, some people in the audience have been coached by me before and they can speak to this, but there's a big difference between self-study programs, which are good for some folks. They work great for some folks. A lot of them I don't really care for, but <laughs> they work for some people, but they have gaps and they're newer. The license, the master level license for me was 15 years ago. So I didn't have all the, the things that are out now. So a lot of people, what I see and what one of the problems that we talked about with your history is that you had so many things. And if you're using so many things, and I, I actually lectured this to the, to the last uh, group I had last week, that if you're mixing too many things together, that means that what you have doesn't fit your needs entirely. And in your history, some of those programs that you had, you had a certain type of learning style, a certain type of teaching program, but it didn't cater to your needs holistically. And with anxiety, if you have somebody that's really anxious, doing a self-study program, they don't have anybody to bounce back off of, they don't have anybody to kind of fight with them about their thought process and reframing that if I get a question long, oh my God, I'm going to get the test wrong, that catastrophizing, which Michael, you did a lot of that in the beginning, which is common, and then having to build that confidence to say, no, guess what? You got this wrong? Cool. Get over it. You learned something new today. Let's move on, right? And so mm -hmm. there was a little bit of that tough love, but also balanced with, I understand where you are and patience is key, right? So walking through those stages to me was important, which is why I allowed you to, <laughs> I know you're three hours ahead behind me. So I was like, you know, he, if he needs support, I said, Hey, reach out to me because I want to be a partner throughout the time that you're with me to make sure in the time that I have with you, you're getting what you need from me. It's not just about getting through the structure, but you finding yourself and making sure you have that support all the way through. That's the difference. Tutors are great too, but they have one skill set. I have several. <laughs> so for you in your situation, you needed somebody to help you with you fighting yourself, 
but also reinforcing that what you were doing was good, but we needed to tweak and pinpoint what you needed to focus on the most. When you go through self-study programs or tutors, they're not able to pinpoint that. You're having to figure that out on your own, where with me, you don't have to. Every step of the way, I was able to tell you, hey, go back to these things. And you have recordings to go back to as well that you could choose to go back to if you wanted to. But with you, Michael, I think really it was just holding you to the fire to say, hey, you're going to do this. You didn't need 12 weeks from here because you had three points. So three points from your last um, evaluation. So I do want people to know that if I get you for it, I want you for 12 weeks. That means that anything over a 10 point range, we need to do a lot more work. Anything under 12 weeks, it's fine if you have if you're close under 10. So with Michael's situation, because he took it so many times, he only missed by three points. All it told me is that he just needed a structured plan based off of his last scores that could be tailored to the areas that he needed with switching out everything that he was using. And Michael, for you, it was a one-stop shop. You didn't have to go anywhere else. You didn't have to look at YouTube, whatever. You had everything you needed in front of you. But the biggest part was you did the work. I may have helped you with it, but you were the one that had to carry out the homework assignments. You were the one who had to do the reading, right? I can only give you the tools. I can't do anything else. So, so and that's the part for you. I think that was a change. By your fourth week, I saw that change. And I joked, it's like, Michael, I don't know who this is. Who's this? Because you're like, whatever, I, I got that wrong. I'm going to go ahead and study it. Before it was, I'm catastrophizing. I'm probably not going to make it. I'm anxious. This may not be working. But by your fourth week, it was a different Michael showing up in the room, especially after you passed your practice exam. You started to make that shift to, I think I can, I'm not sure, to, you know what, I can do this. And then it's done. And that's the mind shift that I like my colleagues to go through, but with support. And it's lonely. And you did it. And you are done now. So if you could leave one lesson, because I'm sure my colleagues are like, okay, we're ready for the questions. But I want them to hear these stories, because it's not about me. It's about making sure that people don't feel alone, that they're not by themselves. And there are people in this room who have been in this room for quite some time. I love them to death, but it's time for y'all to go. <laughs> so y'all, yeah, and they know who I'm talking about in the audience. Um, you have to think about what's going to push the needle. What do I need to do to get out of this room? And for Michael, he was in my TikTok lives for a minute and he was like, what do I need to do? I get out of space. This is great but I need more. I need something that's tailored to me specifically. Mm -hmm. So Michael, what's one piece of advice that you could give your colleagues or a lesson to pull away from this story? Because you are not the same Michael you were <laughs> eight weeks right. ago. Right. Um, you have a lot more confidence that goes and transcends not just your testing experience, but your professional one and your value of yourself. Aside from the fact that a license, of course, does not say what type of social work you're going to be, you know, it helps with income and all of that. But overall, you're a great social worker before the license, you'll be a great social worker after. That's why I tell my colleagues. So for you, what would be that piece of advice you would give your colleagues, especially when it comes to that mindset? It's very hard to fight when you fail and you failed a couple of times, yeah. but you came out of it and you kept pushing for your license because you wanted it. And you were willing to do whatever it took despite the outcome to get there. Yet was it scary? Yes. Was it challenging? Yes. But you lived to fight another day. And that's what you did. So what would be the pizza pizza advice? Yeah. No, I mean, and I could get, I, I wish I could give several pieces, right? Well, you um, can give a couple. That's I fine. Think, we got about three minutes. Okay. <laughs> awesome. 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 So first one, trust yourself. Trust yourself, trust yourself, right? Yes, trust your coach. Understand that you you understand this work. And just like Shara said, right, a certificate or a license does not tell you what kind of person you are first and then the social worker you are, right? You are the same person before, maybe with a little less confidence, absolutely, but trust yourself. The second one, begin, begin um, trying to be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Ooh, so in no, 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 Michael, Michael, right there. Say that part again. Say that one part again. Yeah. Begin starting to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That part. 
And I say right. that with love and confidence. And the reason why, before you go any further, because none of us like being uncomfortable. We don't like getting up early to have to study when our brain probably doesn't work that early. We don't like studying every day, but knowing that we have to, to get the information in. Some people hate my flashcards and talk to some people out in the audience right now, but <laughs> you got to use them to get the information, right? So you have to be willing to do the things you don't want to do to grow. You do not grow in comfort. You grow in discomfort. You grow when you're scared. You grow when you take action on that fear, despite the outcome. Now keep going, Michael. But I wanted to say that because there's some people out there that I'm talking to <laughs> that I'm going to see soon. <laughs> right? No, Go absolutely. And, and that's exactly it, right? You grow through through the through the discomfort, right? Understanding that, okay, I I passed or you know I failed four times, okay. Do I stop? Absolutely not, right? Um, but what I was doing wasn't working, right? So having that awareness as well, okay. One, invest in myself. What do I got to do? Okay, what? Understanding, I am on a different time zone than Shara, right? I understand if I meet with her at 8 a.m., it's, it's only 10 a.m. over there. I got to do what I got to do, getting to bed early on Fridays so I could be up, right? No matter if I, you know, had to miss out on X, Y, and Z or uh, get up just a tad bit early and then go on, you know, work, whatever. Um, that's really the biggest takeaway is that I, I did something that I haven't done before, right? And now leaving with this, I hope uh, y'all are able to think about what am I doing now that I haven't done yet, right? So yeah, just that. Well, I think you didn't said it all. So <laughs> with that, it is time for me to get to work to pour into them. And it's time for you, Michael, to get ready to do what I always love to disappear to abyss because you don't need me no more <laughs> until it's time for you to come back for your clinical, God willing. Yeah. Um, but even then you have, if you pass your master's, you can pass your clinical It's the same process. Nothing changes except for just a little bit of tweaking, but you have everything. I think you'll be fine either way. With or without me, I feel like I've done my job. We've birthed another social worker. <laughs> so you get to get on out of here and impact more people the way you want to. So I'm so proud of you. And I hope that my colleagues, I always try to bring them stories of real stories of people who have been where they are. Um, and you were just there. So thank you for coming. Thank you for sharing. A couple of people in the, in the chat said congratulations. And I'm going to get ready to let you go, Michael. We All will right. definitely be talking soon. Don't Absolutely. be popping in my tickety talk either because you're done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are people that still be popping up in my TikTok while I'm trying to teach. Right. It's like, oh, I passed. What you doing here? Yeah. All right. But nonetheless, All right. congratulations. Please take care of yourself. And yeah, get Great. on out of here. Thank you so much. And, you know, can't thank you enough, Shara. Good luck, oh, everyone. It was my pleasure. <laughs>